Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. We're heading down to the last of our episodes in Wilmington, North Carolina. We thought we would have one of our favorites back on the show. Um, our favorite Wilmingtonian? Wilming, Wilmington Knights? Wilmingtonian. I think, it's, oh. I think is a proper r- word for somebody, a man of your stature. Washingtonian is a word, so it would make sense. Wilmingtonian. Yeah, I think that would be appropriate. Wilmingtonian. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But it's not true. He's not our favorite person here. Who is? Uh, we are. We're our own favorite people. No. Then once we leave, you'll be our favorite person here. Uh, maybe. I, I'll no. settle for that. I'll take, I'll take no, that. That's, I'll take you're, that. You're number one outside of our own existence. I mean, that's... It's Dr. Frank for me and then Wilmington Brewery. Like, those are my mm. onesie twosies oh, yeah. in this yeah. town that I'll, I, I will miss. But uh, the rest of it's... Um, you know what I really like? Actually, not so I'm, much. I'm changing, <laughs> I'm changing my number one to the... Uh, the lady that lives in my apartment complex on the first floor, right near where everybody walks outside sure. to the inner courtyard part of the, the residence um, and fucking bangs on their window and yells at people if they let their dogs pee too close to where her fucking porch thing is. Oh, all right. Uh, and I fucking tell her to shut the fuck up every single time. I would just take a large human sized shit. I'm her. thinking about it, honestly. Just, just go out there at two in the morning and just fucking dump out. Yes. Like, just spend all, two or three days just eating nothing but meat, which is not outside of my no, usual at diet at not all. At all. Um, then go fiber hard that last day. Yeah. And just go out there and fucking dump out, coil it up nice, too. Uh, look, I put I'd a flag say, on top of it, maybe. No, I wouldn't do that to the flag. Maybe a flag. No, not the. Not if the, I could get a picture of her, I would put her face on a fucking flag and plant it in there. Yeah, no, say, I'm not talking about our, like our flag. I'm talking about a flag, like maybe with a middle finger or something like that. I could do that. Yeah. yeah. What I would say is this, Dan. I'd go all meat. Yeah. Um. So when you're dumping out, it's very clumpy horse, like a horse shit. Like Plopping, a, like plop, plop. Yes. Yeah. So like uh, downtown, we've got the spooky old ghost tours, which I'm sure will be too racist, and they'll probably remove those at some point. Um, and there's these two old horses mm-hmm. that I feel so bad for mm-hmm. that I would I, you just want to walk up and shoot them in the head. It's a bunch of are these like police horses or something? No, no they're the horses that pull the wagon. Yeah, 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 yeah pull yeah. the wagon. Yeah, it, it's like a spooky ghost town tour and all yeah. that shit. When right? it's 175 degrees out, like it is now, 100. percent And they're yeah. just these horses are dead, oh, and nice. it's just like, oh, come on in here, kids. That's where. Uh, the uh, massacre was in 1898. Do you think um, uh, Captain John Stevens lived in that that doorway, and that's where he used to call his slaves in? Do you think uh, that's what it is? Do you think? Do you think <laughs> I, horses, I haven't gone? I refuse to go. Do you think horses take punitive shits? Yeah, Let me yeah. tell you a little story <laughs> yes. about my dog. Yes. So my older dog Jay, he actually turns ten on August 30th. Congratulations, uh, Mazel Tov. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> no, he's not. He's actually <laughs> super anti-Semitic, but he's a dog. I mean, he's I don't, a dog. I don't know. He's... He keeps making statements on Twitter and then having to retract sure. them. I don't know who even gave him a Twitter account. He so apologized to the Philadelphia Eagles already. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so my dog. After I bathe him, so like I give him a bath, he hates it so much that he'll sneak back into the bathroom and shit on the rug. In the bathroom. Are you serious? So, yeah. So That's I'm wondering awesome. if these horses time it out. Mm. They're like, fuck. Because they've got to be like, fuck this. Well, yeah. here's what I've noticed. When you're behind mm-hmm. it in a car, Dr. Frank, because mm-hmm. I've, been, I've, I've been stuck in horse traffic down there where it's the horse and the, yeah, 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 and yeah, the carriage. Yeah, yeah. And then you get stuck behind it. It's a one-lane road. Mm. So you have to ride that out until the fucking horse does. Yeah, don't beep your horn. If you get too close to that horse... It'll just clump out just right there in front of your car. Like a defense mechanism. Correct. It's almost like Mario Kart where he's spraying fucking oil slick. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what I recommend for you and this woman. I would eat meat. So that way it is hard human-like. <clears throat> if you coil it up like I that. I could eat MREs, could be actually. If I eat MREs for a week mm-hmm. and then started mm-hmm. eating Taco Bell for the last two days, ooh, man, yeah. you don't want to know the fucking disaster that comes out of my ass at that point. Yikes. I mean, it's like a war crime, basically, at that yeah. point. I have to register with the Hague and probably attend my own trial. Uh, and then you'd, you'd also have to go door to door, I think, in something like that. And, Register uh, dumper. Yes, <laughs> yeah. and report yourself of what you do. Yeah. Who you are. I'm required whenever someone new shows up to let them know that I shit on things. Yeah. Hi, my name is Dan Holloway. And just like look up. I am obligated by the city of Wilmington to tell you that I've been known to shit on things. Some have even said they have seen my penis and my balls. Um, I will not be shitting in your area because I've learned my lesson and I am a man on the uptick. I don't know why I had to do it in that voice. I don't Dr. know why Frank, that I have a, I don't know why, why I've got a lisp in I that miss you guys. but I feel like <laughs> Uh, now I might start using a lisp. Anytime someone starts to annoy me in a public conversation, I just go sh- full on lisp. It's from it's from uh, Office Space. The uh, the guy in Office Space. 
Black uh, guy. He was here in which the studio. Which guy? Motherfucker. He was here in our studio. Um, Orlando Jones? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. When he, was, think, when he was pretending to be a crackhead yeah, to sell really magazines. Yeah, that yeah. was good. I would yeah. want addicted to crack. Um, yeah. you were, you've guy. never been addicted to, to crack? No, no. Not, no. That I, not that I know of. No. You would know. I, I would know, and I have not been, thankfully. Yeah. You I don't know great, though, Dr. Yeah, Frank. I don't know why, why is he being cagey about the crack thing. <laughs> Yeah, like this isn't the fucking crack, press, dude. Crack, yeah. I, it's, I try, you know, I, I, it's, it, I, it's neither here nor there, you know. Um, you can still do your job properly. I feel like. Yeah. Yes. You're not performing surgeries anymore. Not anymore. Um, although I, I do miss it. I feel like yeah. you could be high on crack and prescribe dick, dick medicine. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. P- for sure. Usually, it, it makes you better because yeah, you go anyway. faster. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. See more patients. Exactly. Yeah. It's fantastic. They're all piled up in the corner. Uh, if you don't know Dr. Frank, he runs the, the, uh, the Frank Institute here in Wilmington, North Carolina. Named after Anne Frank, I believe. Yes. Actually, you're related. I am actually related. Yeah, Frank. We about so you're time. a hero on this show automatically. Yeah. That's We're why. big Frankophiles. Yeah. So if you're out there and you're like, oh, shit, how do I change my life? Go to the Frank Institute. See Dr. Frank. Um, last time you were on the show, I talked about how much you, you uh, have helped me personally mm. and other people. I, I want to say what? Close to four hundred drinking bros or something like hit you up or it's been it's been insane. Um, yeah, thank you for saying that. I actually I started my own hormone therapy since the last time I was on the show. Yeah, so it was crazy. I was falling asleep at two o'clock in the <clears> afternoon <throat> and I was cranky and I couldn't lose weight and I just felt like total dog shit. And I was like, oh, maybe I should get my testosterone checked. Yeah, yeah. two twenty four. Oof, should that's worse than mine was. Four hundred yeah. is the lowest. Right? My, no, no. no, no. So oh, you mean to? It's like the three eighties is where they where, yeah, the, where, where regular where, doctors consider it low. No, Correct. it depends. Any, yeah, it's, it's it's difference between normal and optimal, and that's a whole other set of problems. But um, no, so I got I got on test mm-hmm. and I feel amazing. You said two twenty four. Yeah, when I first went into the VA in twenty thirteen, I think it was mine was like one eighty. Yeah, that's low. And they were like, okay, that yeah, that's low. I'm like, yeah, fucking, yeah, it's low. What the yeah. hell are you talking about? I'm surprised you didn't have a vagina. I did. I he had does. Several, he still does, yeah. though. Yeah. He still does. Yeah. I've seen it, I call it a man puss. So I went in and saw you. I told my story on the show. Everybody else started going in to see you, and, like, everybody's freaking out of, like, holy shit, I can't believe how much better I feel and mm-hmm. everything else. Because you really do go through a lot of shit mentally where you're, like, you can't, you can't describe it. Um, while you're going through it, you're like, man, I don't feel like a crazy person. But Depression I, I for no reason. Crazy, yes. Anxiety, like my life is going great. Sleep. Why do I feel like yeah. shit? Mm-hmm. It exactly. doesn't make any sense. Why am I depressed? Why am I gaining weight? Why am I doing certain things? Mm-hmm. Why, do, why am I yelling at your wife or your kids for yeah. no reason yeah. and everything else? And then you realize, oh, shit, um, I'm low on testos- testosterone. Mm-hmm. Um, your TRT treatments are amazing, and they're, they're pretty fucking cheap. They, um, they are. And I have to say, I mean, the... The, the every single drink bros that have called me that I've been lucky enough to talk to mm-hmm. every and I have no idea how it is because you guys are such dicks every mm-hmm. one of True. those guys True. are amazing I, know. I have enjoyed speaking to every one of these guys I mean I get stories just terrible you know it's like my life is falling apart and I can't get it together and my kids and my wife and my job and they and I just sit down and I talk to them and I listen Yep. And I and I understand their stories, and I'm like, holy shit, you guys, your testosterone's in the tank, and it's a very simple treatment. We get yeah. them on the appropriate medication at the mm-hmm. appropriate dose, and I get you know phone calls back, I get emails back. Doc, I, I can't believe how much better I feel. Yeah. I've been to four different doctors in the VA, or I've been to my primary care doctor ran my test, and it was 270, and he said I was fine. Right. Meanwhile, I'm symptomatic as hell. It's mm-hmm. been. It's been more enjoyable for me mm-hmm. and the feedback that I've gotten and the guys that I've been able to help from being on this show than anything that, that they've done for me. So it, I'm just incredibly appreciative to you guys mm-hmm. and to everybody. Well, we use it too. It's, I mean, I've yeah. been using it for a long time, but it yeah. sounds weird I, I saying I've been using it. Yeah, I, like, look, I, I was new to it. Um, what did you say? Yeah. It's one of those things as, as a dude, you're like, man, I, I don't feel like I have a problem with anything. Um, and then all of a sudden you start to spin out and you're like, man, what the fuck is going on with yeah. me personally? But you get caught up in it. You don't realize it until no. like later on and you start to like reflect a little bit like, God damn, man, why did I do any of that shit? Exactly. And it's not just that immediate reaction either. It's the second and third order effects. Like if you're trying to get something done, you're in school or you're trying to get a promotion or you're trying to learn something new or whatever the fuck, you're not doing it if you feel like that. You're, you're mm-hmm. going to fucking lie in bed. You're going to be mad. You're going to do whatever the fuck, right? You're going right. to feel like shit all day. For roughly 
once you get into the program for roughly 100 to 150 bucks a month, mm-hmm. yep. which a lot of people are spending on goddamn cigarettes out there, yeah. uh, you could feel like you're 25 years old. Yeah. Honestly, that, that, is, that sounds reductive of the whole process, but that is exactly what the fuck it is. It's, it is. It's absolutely right. What's your number again? It's 910-679-8534. Um, give us a call. Christine will answer. And, you know, she's, it, it, we have a special segment about how did you hear about us, mm-hmm. and you guys have your own tab. Because ah. so many of, 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 your, of your listeners have called, and it's always the same thing. It's like, I just I don't know what's wrong. I can't, I can't get it together. I had one of your guys say the best thing I've ever heard. It says, I feel like I've lost my edge. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit, that's exactly what it is. It is. And, you know, I've, I've had guys that, that have said, you know, thank you. My, my wife told me, I, I, you know, I told her that I was going to be on, you know, have a call with you today and mm-hmm. your follow-up appointment. And she said to me, tell that doctor thank you for giving me my husband back. Right. I hear that all the time, and it's just like, one, I'm incredibly, I'm flattered and I'm humbled. And then at the same time, I'm incredibly pissed off because I'm like, these guys have been suffering for years. Yeah. yeah. Do we do no we, we project there's something are between 50 and 55 million dudes in this country right now that need this treatment. And there's probably only a couple million using it. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, the, the biggest issue is this. So and most I, of them are buying it from fucking their friends and shit like that. They're not yeah. even like getting yeah, yeah, it from yeah. a doctor. Yeah, bootleg shit yeah. of it. I, my issue was, you know, I went into my family doctor mm-hmm. um, here, um, which, you know, I, I don't know what your fucking background is with the doctors in this town, but I think they're awful. Um, and I, I'd gone through a handful of them, and I was like, man, I think something's off. I think something's off. I would, would, would check your labs, and you seem fine. You know, you're fucking testosterone. It's supposed to be. It was like two points higher or something like that. It wasn't good. Just because so it, wasn't it doesn't like the trigger into their, your healthcare program or whatever. Mm-hmm. I was like, look, man, I don't give a fuck about what the insurance is going to cover, not cover. I want to know if this is low, if this is appropriate, and try to get through yeah. it. They all fucking lied to me. Um, you know, they're all weird as shit about any goddamn medication here. Um, and uh, then still... I, I saw you. Yeah. And you fucking changed my life. And I was like, dude, come on the show. Uh, yeah. You end up coming on the show. Um, everybody fucking calls and uses you religiously now. And we end up becoming bros in real life. Yeah. Just fucking hanging. Like, you've been over my house for fights and all that other shit. Uh, we have no affiliation other than we're just friends in real yeah. life. Um, and then I'm grateful that, you know, you helped me. But um, that that's kind of uh, about it. And, uh, you know, I have a feeling there's a lot of people that are in other towns across the, the nation that are going through the same thing. They're going to see their family doctors. They're getting lied to. They're saying, oh, well, your labs look fine and your test looks fine and all this other shit. And it's not the truth. So no, I'm I want to have if- you back on and be like, hey, man. Yeah. It, it, again, I really want to stress this. If you're going through something mentally, because we get messages all the time. Yeah. And it's like, more than likely, it could be this, man. If you're having, if you're a former soldier of some sort, or a fighter, or police, or anything like that, anything, even if it's, even if it was amateur shit you were doing, and your head got banged around a little bit, you're almost, I, I would bet my goddamn life that you have low testosterone because your pituitary gland gets fucked up, mm-hmm. and that regulates that. Plus, it'll start spitting out prolactin and all this other shit that li- mm-hmm. that kills testosterone, right? Even if you are producing it, it's fucked up. So there's so many fucking things that go. Anytime any dude. That's a former, particularly former shooters and operators, tell me that they've they're they're experiencing like PTSD symptoms. Like, dude, go fucking get your testosterone checked right now because that is almost if it's not the reason, it's one of them. It's probably the biggest one yeah. because you can't make any clear headed decisions when you're fucking with, with the brain fog, the anger. It, when I like what that guy said about feeling like he lost his edge because think about that from an animal's perspective. When an animal gets injured and feels like it can't fully defend itself anymore, and these are fucking alphas we're talking about. These dudes are alphas, yeah. right? When it gets injured and feels like it can't defend itself, what does it do? It starts fucking lashing out at anything that comes near it. Any kind of emotional or fucking physical response is going to be anger all the time. And you can't live your fucking life that way. No. It's, it, it's, it's shocking how there's this weird taboo almost around testosterone. Because of fucking professional wrestling, dude. Because, because of Lyle yeah. Alzado yep. and fucking and, and Macho Man. Yeah, but they're taking steroids. I like know, dude, but people right. are fucking D-ball stupid. And, you know, the old school shit. Yes, and it's not even close to the same thing, right? No, it's, it's, it's not. You're exactly right. It's not close at all. Performance enhancing is performance enhancing. You're doing it to gain muscle, to do whatever. That's not what I do. I mean, you hit on the idea of this normal range. Mm-hmm. And I think for Quest Labs, it's 248 Oof. to 827. Yeah. What was that? Four hundred percent difference. Yeah, 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 I even yeah. think I think I even said this on the last show. Yeah. It's staggering. And then they'll say guys come in at two eighty, and 
they're symptomatic because they have all the things that we've we've been talking about. But it's somebody that's like 30 years old. Yeah. yeah. And that's the other thing is that, oh, you're too young. Well, guess what? Your testosterone's only going to go down. If you're 29 and your test is in the shitter at 29, it's not going up. guess what? At 34, it's going to be even worse. Yeah. This is just a, it's just a, it's a steady slide away from normal. <laughs> and next thing you know, you're just, you're a shell of yourself and it's sad and it's depressing and it, you know, you throw all that kind of emotional stuff onto a base where you're already low. Mm. And it's like, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking for me as a physician, especially as someone who knows that I can help people, mm -hmm. that they just don't even know where to go. No. Yeah. I, I didn't. I fucking found you online through yeah. hunting and pecking all these different weird people and all that shit. Say your number one more time, your phone number. 910-679-8534. And I give my email out. It's Dr. Frank, D-R-F-R-A-N-K, at frankinstitute.com. Reach out, even if you don't know. Just yeah. ask. I'm here as a resource. Whether yeah. you become a patient or not, I don't really give a shit. Just know that I can help you in what you in what needs to be done, whether you come to me or not. Yeah, and, and, and again, that's why we wanted to have you back on before we left, because it's um, I, I don't care what town you're in in America. A great doctor is a great doctor. A great teacher is a great teacher, right? Um, therefore, I wanted to say thank you, at least before I left, because um, I don't know. You know, in Austin, Texas, I'm gonna have to find somebody to fucking juice me up, brother. But um, uh, we'll, we'll see who that is. Um, but what I'm curious is, uh, for somebody like me who hates needles, mm -hmm. I've got two fears in this life, if you'll call them that. Needles, which is weird because I get fucking tattoos and all that shit. But um, uh, and heights, right? Everyone should be afraid of heights. That's what I think. See, I'm not, it doesn't freak me out. We'll really? see. My brother is. You want to go my brother skydiving? Jess is. Yes, absolutely, I do. Dan will go. Just, and, I'll go with you anytime. I, uh, my brother Jess is terrified of heights. Oh, really? Terrified. When and you say you're scared of heights, do you mean you get paralyzed when you're in a high spot? Or you're just. Because if you feel fear, that is very natural. You should feel fear. Here's the weirdest thing no, about but it. I, if I'm, you don't, don't feel fear, that's Tell a me. Go to the YouTube. Go to Drinking Bros Podcast YouTube comment section and, and, and write this down if you have this. Because this is what I have. When I'm in a very high place. I, like a roof or a, a bridge. Like I'm, I'm, my palms are sweaty talking about. <laughs> uh, if, I'm a, if I'm on a bridge or a roof or somewhere mm -hmm. high, I want to just jump off. I don't know why. I know that I will die, and I obviously don't do it, or else I still wouldn't be alive. Today. Why don't you just go skydiving? I did. So, um, but, but do we'll see. We'll be with. We'll be at near Dakota now. Right, well, Dakota lives like what fifteen minutes from your house. Here's the weird thing. I have no problem in planes or flights or like I've been in Dakota's helicopter. Um, even in 50K and a Call Girl, I wrote that scene in there, specifically the skydiving scene, so I'd ha I would have to do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I did it, and I didn't feel really anything. Like, it felt safe and, you know. It is too safe. just glide down. And I was, it was tandem, obviously, but um, it was it, the first time I've ever Maybe been. you should do a uh, squirrel suit. Get a fucking wing suit. Oh, God. Go you imagine? What? Richard Ryan does that shit no all the time. <laughs> no chance, man. I think. <laughs> Slam into a mountain? But uh, between Andy Stump and Richard Ryan, I bet they've got fucking... 15,000 jumps. I heard Andy's like not going to do it anymore that he's going to like he he finally he, he might just like, be getting is... bored with it. To be honest cuz I got bored with it. I it, Oh, to, you have done it? Skydiving. I haven't done squirrel suits. Okay, no, okay. No. I was like, no, man, if you've done squirrel suits. Like jumping out of planes and skydiving, I jumped out more as a civilian than I ever did. I didn't even jump that many times in the army. I jumped a shitload of times as a civilian and eventually I was just like I'm just doing this to do it. Like yeah, it's man. not it's not like Pumping me up, and I don't, I don't feel that same shit anymore. So what's the point? I'm just paying some asshole four hundred dollars to throw me out of a goddamn airplane. Yeah, and I and I felt the same way when I did it, where I was just like, all right, I, I did this and it was cool, and like it's still the next time yeah. I went up into like a high building or something, didn't conquer it, but like there is some weird thing in me when I'm up high and I just I'll look over and I'll be like, man, I should just fucking jump right off this right now. Well, one of I don't know why. one that, of Black Rifle's employees. That's strange. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's strange. really bizarre. Yeah, one of Black Rifle's really employees, weird. Nate. He uh, he runs their I think social media marketing over there. Yeah. Uh, he he does base jumping like he went to that that mountain in Italy where everybody base jumps and oh, jumped yeah, off yeah, of that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. He's done everything. He base jumps every weekend basically. He goes out to the uh, he they live in Salt Lake still, so he goes down to whatever that fucking mountain range is right there and jumps off of shit every sing, almost every single weekend. That's fucking he's gnarly, got man. A couple thousand jumps at this point, wingsuit, all that bullshit. He's crazy as shit. I, but I, like I, if you wanted good. to do it, we have we know people where you can actually go fucking try and see if you like doing that shit. I think it's a little risky. Like he does the open shoot stuff where he's holding his parachute in his hand mm -hmm. and he jumps and then throws it up in the air. Oof. You know what I mean? Because you have to get, it has to get fuller faster if you're jumping from a yeah, lower yeah, level. Yeah, or else you're going to fucking yeah. teeter to the ground. Oh, I'm not doing any of that. Um, no. By the way, having some wine today with Dr. Frank. We're classing it up because we have uh, a new sponsor, uh, First Leaf. Try First Leaf. 
Tryfirstleaf.com. Slash drinking bros. Slash drinking bros. Um, the best here's what is, happens. You're a wine. You like wine. You're I wine do. Man. I do like. So wine. here's what they do for people who are either beginners or intermediate or just like want a fucking new wine club. You go on there. You answer all their questions. It takes a couple minutes. You answer all their questions about different kind of foods you like. What kind of flavors, including like t- tobacco, chocolate, just stuff that you're going to mm-hmm. see in a in a fucking wine uh, flavor. Then you submit that. They send you six bottles for thirty bucks. It's called First Leaf. First, first Leaf. leaf. Yeah. Try, Try First Leaf. dot com forward slash Stringer Bros. Yeah. Six bottles for thirty dollars. So, so you, ours oh, just I'm came doing in that when I go. Yeah. They send you six yeah. bottles. Yeah, you, you, yeah. you try all of them. You write your notes about them on their website. You go back to the site, write in your notes about all those, and you, they use that to build your flavor profile, and they start sending you wine. And each time and they're all different you give notes world, back. Yeah. 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 So like each this, time you submit really your cool. notes again, and they ultimately will tailor like a perfect wine club just for you. And this doesn't exist anywhere else, by the way. That's pretty – I'm a huge one because my cousin Lily, whose birthday it is today, um, work is one of Gary V's people at the wine library. Mm. Tell her to quit her job. Why? That's what Gary Vee would say. Quit <laughs> your job, she, dude. She's you work happy, with your, quit your she's job, change your life, problem. divorce your wife. <laughs> See, she loves him. Drop she your thinks he's, children she off thinks he's great. Baskets. They're <laughs> orphans. Yeah, a lot of people love Gary Vee. Um, Dan's got a fucking thing about Gary Vee. Mm. What, what is he? He was a rich... That winery that he's talking about, the wine library, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. worth a fuckload of money, and that's his inheritance. Yeah, yeah, like he didn't build shit, dude. Yeah. All he did was fucking run his suck hole and dum dums on the internet and fucking listen to him now with his fucking empty platitudes. Like, yeah, just quit your job if you don't like it. Well, it's easy to say when you got thirty million fucking dollars in the bank, fuck face. <laughs> like, give me a fucking break, dude. That is to me that is toxic bullshit. It's unrealistic for the for the audience that he's talking yep. to. Who knows how many people he's fucked over? And his wine is unrealistic. Go to tryfirstleaf.com forward slash Drinking bros today, six six bottles for for thirty yeah. bucks. So what do you got there? yeah, I'm gonna give you a little porzies. Uh, I'll just give you the bottle. Oh, We're fucking friends, dude. Yeah, just We're drink homies. out of the We're homies, and, lovers, and friends. And and I have to say that that um you know my my kids have gotten to know you guys, and I like I, said, I I love you guys. You guys have been great. We have become very good friends. My kids love you guys. I told them that you guys were leaving, and um Super they were sad. they were Tears. not so bunny who loves you. Yeah. Is uh, she's like, oh, is that the pumpkin man? Yeah, and then and then they, you know you've been over now a couple yeah. of times, which is scary. Um, that he actually knows where I live. Um, that and the kids are core is like, is the man with the beard coming over? Kids always like me. I don't know why. Try I don't know why. I think it's because I talk to them like they're adults. Maybe like I've, I I'm, none of the baby talk, even if they're infants. I'm like, hey, kid, come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. fucking have a conversation yeah, yeah, about yeah, life. Yeah. And I knife hand them, and I get in their face and scream. And no, <laughs> so my kid, my six year old, does the knife hand because of Dan. Because oh yeah, he's been over, so he'll, he'll always. Jesus he'll always Christ, what are you fucking drunk already? Yeah, welcome answer? to drinking, bros. You're good, Doctor Frank. You're good. Um, with oh, that's the, good. With what the, is this? this is good. With the fear of needles and all of that yes, shit. Yes, yes. Let me, we, let me ask you. Yeah, let's discuss some options. Um, why isn't there like a dissolvable yet? Like one of our other sponsors is uh, fucking getroman.com for slash drinking bros, obviously. But some, uh, we, we talk about this company all the time because they've surpassed Viagra, right? Yes. It is one of those products where it's a fucking boner pill that you ship through the mail. You get it in 48 hours and then boom, you're ready to go. Again, somebody who hates doctors and going in to see doctors. You can skip the Viagra bullshit. You can miss me. That's with that every single bullshit. dude that's ever been in the military. Yes, dude. Nobody wants actually to every. Go that, that, in it's for a that trope. Shit. It's a trope that men will never go to the doctor. No, right? dude. Yeah, no, no, never. So, are we close, like as a fucking society, to getting dissolvables that go underneath your tongue for either TRT or HGH or what, what's the other one you always talk about, Dan? Uh, well, HCG helps you produce natural testosterone, and mm-hmm. Samorlin is what helps you Samorlin, produce natural yes, HGH. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Samorlin is essentially, mm-hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, but it makes you produce more natural HGH instead of taking direct H- a- HGH. That's yeah. exactly correct. So okay. are we close to that? And I, like, there was a, I heard you talking about it one night when you were over that you guys might be developing something. I bet the yield would be too low. The, the issue with testosterone, in, and they're what called trochies, you put them kind of mm-hmm. your, in your <clears throat> inside your mouth, yeah. is you get, you get bumps. It's not a steady mm-hmm. state. And so you have to take them frequently so it's got to get into the bloodstream oh yeah that's what alex rodriguez was taking with the gummies right yeah so he like in the seventh inning of the game if he had an at bat coming up in the ninth he would take a gummy very short burn yeah, really? yeah, yeah. that's exactly that, and, 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 and then after he wouldn't test positive for fucking elevated testosterone too like they had it fucking figured out dude. yeah the only reason he got caught is because his name showed up in reports that's it like he otherwise he never would have been caught no shit yep so are, are you working on something like that because i feel like you could be that guy 
who could be on all the fucking commercials and shipping shit out all the time. Like, is that is that medically possible? It is, and we're actually we have a I have a very good pharmacist buddy who's actually not too far from this building. Mm. Um, that we've been in very close contact about finding some ideas. the The problem with doing like Samorlin or growth hormone is the size of the molecule. Mm-hmm. If it's too big, it's you can't fit it in a, in a dissolvable tablet very mm. easily. Um, so H, uh, HCG is available under the tongue, absorbable okay. now. Um, and how does that work? So basically you just put... No, I mean, I, I know oh. how it works. How does it work physically for your body? Like, is it the same as... It's the exact same thing. Because for, for, for example... Well, that's uh, subcutaneous. Yeah, that's a different like, kind of shot. Like steroids, right? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. you, can, you can get injections. That's mm-hmm. intramuscular, for, for TRT. You can get injections. Yep. You can get pellets. Put yep. in. Yep. Uh, your ass, which is what I have right now. Right. Um, or you can get the cream mm-hmm. right? that, that mm-hmm. goes on. Now, I've heard the cream is 30%, and it just doesn't work. It's, it's a low, lower yield. It is, and the, the biggest issue with the cream is that most of the guys that come to me, their testosterone is so low mm-hmm. that it, I, just, I can't get enough testosterone in the cream yeah. in order to get it to where it needs to be. For <laughs> absorption, for – it's just – the once, other thing Once is, you get it up there, you can maintain with cream, right? Depending it on de- if it, it you'd depends. have to try it. Yeah. It depends. If it's something like physiologically wrong with them, then that'll never yeah. work. And you know, they and need I, intramuscular injections. That's the difference. Like yeah. some Orlin and ECG are in your fat. They're not in the muscle. That's why it's different. You could probably make those dissolvable, it, provided the molecule was the right shape and size and all that shit. But mm-hmm. for testosterone, the yield would just be so low. It, it's you can't. <laughs> the the cream the the issue with with some of these more dissolvables is that you have to do you have to it's multiple times mm-hmm. you know it's not like a shot where you do a shot you know once every three days once every seven days you do the pellets where it's every five months right you know you're putting the, that trochee in daily if not more and that cream you're slathering on every single day yeah every and guys day. it's just it's to be a pain in the ass most guys don't want to you know don't it, the women that i see is different the cream works really well for them it's just a different kind of mentality the guys are like you know it's plus it takes longer to get the effects i, I just i think of the all the guys I have in my practice, I would say l- I can count maybe on one hand the number of guys that are on cream. Yeah, uh, and that mm-hmm. sounds about right uh, based on what everybody said yeah. before. You should just let me give you shots. I'm Honestly. I'm, I, look, like, just don't the, look. It doesn't feel like anything. Thing. It's not that. I use a 25-gauge needle. You don't feel shit. It, it, it's, it's the needle thing. Is there any way that there will be a dissolvable from this in the near future? I, the TRT? It, it's very possible. You know, I'm, I'm, we're working on some things now to make – the treatment that I do available, very available for people everywhere. Mm. And one of those things that, that we're working on is trying to figure out many different options because, you know, I, there are active military guys that get deployed. Yeah. And, like, I can't take a bottle of freaking testosterone with me. Wow. So, yeah, you're not supposed to take a bottle. Anyway. <laughs> Everybody and does it. Everybody Every does. single body. And if, you, if you're deploying and you're not taking testosterone, you fucking should be. Sorry. I'm, and, then, I'm, and then when you get I'm out. I'm not in the military anymore. I don't give a shit. You should, every single fucking shooter in the goddamn military should be on testosterone. Motherfucker. Is there any fucking situation where performance enhancement is, makes a lot of sense with no moral judgment attached to it? It's probably one where you could die. I 100% I agree. Jesus fucking Christ. I Come on, DOD, agree. get on board. But that's what you're doing now, right? So, so for people out there who are like, hey, man, I don't live in North Carolina, mm-hmm. you're still able to ship it to yep. wherever they are, yep. right? Yep. Okay. Because a lot of drinking bros who, who have hit us up after your episode, it was an extremely powerful episode. And like, mm. I, I just thought it was my situation, to be honest with you. I didn't realize it was everybody else's, too. Yep. Um, but uh, they were sending in pictures that you will, you would send them uh, the syringes and the, the whole mm-hmm. shit. Yeah, um, and it's a kit. Yeah. They can do it themselves. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That's what um, I get. He, everything yeah. comes to my house. I fucking pop myself once a week. That's it. So if you're not a pussy, you can you can easily do that. Yeah, but, I actually uh, have. I actually just got my shipment today, right before I left my mm-hmm. office. I actually have it in my bag right outside. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So yeah. And we're Again, working. We're the the, the two dissolvables is what I really. Want. <laughs> I'm work, I promise, man. I promise, I'm working on so it. So you I are promise. you are working. I am on it. actively working. Thing. I'm actively okay. working on that and the Samorlin. I shouldn't say that because I don't want somebody else to steal my idea, but then kiss my ass. Well, speaking of stealing ideas, we will <laughs> very sometime in the very near future, uh, you'll be able to get this product all across the country. I yes. hope so, man. No, I'm not Fuck, saying dude. it's not a matter of hope. Yeah, it's happening. I'm telling you, and I know that it's happening. You can fucking figure out why I know that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. gonna it's gonna be exciting. I uh, I mean, I, after being on the show, I realized what a huge need there was, and someone else sitting in this room whose name is not Ross yep. 
came to me and said, hey, man, can you do this? Yeah. And I said, well, there's a couple of issues. And he said, if I can solve those issues, will you do it? And I said, yes. And he already had the issue solved before I even asked the questions. And so that, it's a good interrogation technique. You don't ever ask a question that you don't yeah. already know the answer to. Right? And, and, and it's going and it's going to launch here very, very, very soon. And yep. it's really exciting because I think you have a lot of people out there who are like me, who are like, man, I don't want to give myself injections every day mm-hmm. or I want to carry that shit every day. Like mm-hmm. me, I travel a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, fuck, man. Even through COVID, Dan and I are obviously uh, non-believers in COVID. And um, we've flown to numerous states over and I over, just got and over an, again. I got an antibody test. Yeah. Last, not last Friday, but the Friday before, and I'm, I haven't had COVID. Really? Yeah. yeah from this great and doctor. And I've been fucking gave me everywhere. Test. I'm a survivor. I've been everywhere. I don't I'm practice survivor. any social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking, I, I have a beard and it's itchy under a mask. So even if I'm wearing a mask, I'm touching my fucking face all day. I yeah. Got shit. It's true. Get fucked. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> and if I did get it, I wouldn't notice. If anyway, you so fucking make these dissolvables, by the way, yeah. I will, I will make you a fucking Dr. Frank statue and put it in the goddamn thing that's all i want is dissolvables in my life i try to simplify my life to when i was a, a child like a six-year-old mm. right yeah i went dissolvables yeah. yes same with uh like flintstone no they, they you can get the fucking gummies for sure that's a thing that exists for for testosterone mm-hmm. it's gummies testosterone, but okay. like he said it doesn't work as well or you gotta pop them all day you you have to take them at least once a day yeah, I would at least, say, at depending least on the dosage day. but it would be if you're if you're like if you're where he was at two forty something or whatever, and you're trying to get back up to seven eight hundred, mm-hmm. no fucking way. You, you would be yeah. cramming those things down all day, and it would probably affect your fucking homeostasis in some way to have that much shit going in your yeah, body. Yeah, I, that, that doesn't sound like something I would want, want no, to get into. No, I mean, what would be great is to do some kind of patch or some kind of minimally invasive patch would be good. Yeah, put it under the skin, not like the pellets, because that's yeah, you know, or is, there's got to be a way to do it and. Thankfully, I have. There's a couple smart guys that I know that are that are helping me with this. The pellets can't be that bad. Women have been using them in their arm for birth control forever now. They are. It's just you're putting in what six, seven. How many pellets are they? Eleven. Yeah, eleven. Ten, eleven. Yeah. I mean, it's. I got them in my ass right now. Nine, eleven. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And it's don't all, think that was both bad. Of my Never forget. Twin, my twin tower cheeks went down. Oh, did that. you put it in his butthole? Yeah, I think you're butt. supposed to put it under the skin. Got to go <laughs> in your ass, dude. You got to go in your ass. So mm. it's it's all sewn in. The beauty of it is, is um, every time I'm in there, because like he'll have like a different assistant and shit. Like, mm-hmm. I don't. If anybody doesn't know this, it is true. I have the words <laughs> Asian writing <laughs> tattooed on my ass. Just those two words, Asian writing tattooed on my ass. So every time, whoever is your assistant <laughs> or nurse or whatever, is always remarkably. They're like, "Oh my gosh!" And I was like, "But it's beautiful Mor- Asian writing." Tattooed Mor- on my ass. Morgan did say something. She goes. What does this tattoo on his ass say? <laughs> I'm like, hey, I remember the first time you told me that. I was like, yeah, yeah you right, didn't believe right. me. I didn't believe you. No and then, one ever believed and then me. We did the first injection, and I was like, holy shit, he's not lying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Morgan, uh, is that the one that yes. was in there when I was that there last blood. week? Yeah, the yeah. blonde one. She's funny. Yeah, she uh, she liked that I was talking mad shit to him. So you might want to look into that. She might be fucking trying to usurp your authority over there. Well, it, here's it, the it, thing: like you're a cool, like in real life, you're a cool guy and you're a cool fucking doctor. Like, man, I've had some really fucked up doctors. The last one I had that was <laughs> fucked up in this town, um, he uh, had two what, those giant holes in his ears. Like he was he was some, a doctor. You said yeah. Doctor. Doctor. Was it in quotations? It, it, was he wearing a lab coat? Or was he well like, been. He was. was, he, was he was all. Did he have anything know? on he was under in, lab He coat. was in yeah. cut off jorts and fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well have been. So he sits me down. And, Jinko pants. You know, he was, he was one of the first ones that I was just like, hey, man, you know, yeah. take the labs, all this shit. Mm. He goes, you know, your labs look fine. You know, whatever your testosterone number was, I was like two points above it. And I was like, yeah. that doesn't sound very good. And he goes, no, you're right in range, you know. And I was like, great. Um, I had to take Xanax uh, from time to time. So I was like, great. I need to, re- you have to go in for a refill now. Yeah. In the state of like Carolina. every three months. Yeah. Yeah. Every three yeah, months. Yeah. So I go in and I was like, hey, man, you know, and they were like, uh, the guy goes, uh, let me ask you, Russ, why are you taking the Xanax? And I was like, I don't fucking anxiety, stress, like, you know, normal day to day shit. Nothing big, you know? Yeah. And, um, and he goes, uh, you should probably figure out the answer to that. You know, and I was like, he goes, I'm going to send you to somebody like a like a therapist or something like that. And I go, no, I just want you to write me the goddamn prescription so I can get the fuck out of here. I go, if I wanted to lecture about life and who you think I'm supposed to be, yeah. I'd ask you why I could fit my whole dick through a, a, the hole inside your fucking ears. Um, is that those things were. 
the, Aborigine. Like they, the they were hanging in his fucking ear. Yeah, they were hanging. I'm like, you're gonna give me a lecture about my life when clearly you were in some form of Christian rock band at, <laughs> at age fucking. 19 and you got these gaping holes put in your thing that and jesus himself could have hung himself on now you're going to give me that advice this is what people are going through throughout the country <laughs> they are yeah, there's shitty doctors everywhere especially if you're going to the va like giving oh, my oh, give, yeah. don't even get me started giving giving myself testosterone injections wasn't even an option it was only the cream. That's it. And at the time, it was actually Andrew Gel, which is fucking. Worse. Oh my god! Yeah, it's garbage. Oh Jesus! They're like, yeah, just put three pumps on each shoulder every morning. I'm like, that seems like a lot, man. How is my body absorbing all that, motherfucker? Yeah. And then my uh, girlfriend started growing a dick because there was so much testosterone in the house, and I sucked it, but it wasn't fucking great. It didn't, it didn't, it, she didn't come. No, she can't <laughs> come. She doesn't have It was three pumps. So yeah. I sucked yeah. three pumps. That's all I got. We all know the three pump Johnny no quivers, you know, where it's just like. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I think it was, I, a, it was the best 17 your, and 20 seconds of her life. Sorry, this never you. happens to me. Yeah, I ruined your roommate's bathroom. <laughs> I actually wear a shirt that says, sorry, this never happens to me. Yeah, And then, and then after way, I do it, I just point to the shirt like, come on. Come on. I warned you before so. we yeah. even started. You knew, yeah. you knew what this was. You knew <laughs> what this was. Before we started fucking. Um, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Whore. Dr. Frank, we're just ending careers like as we leave Wilmington. And just yeah. like, well, sorry about that. Um, since we are, let's talk about the hospital being sold here. Okay, let's talk about um, it. Off the record, I, I told you about it three months before. You did. Happened, you did. Said, you man, did. <laughs> here's who's going to buy this hospital. We get all the information leaked to us, including like the school board. Like I got their fucking emails and texts and all that Was shit. it Elon Musk that bought the hospital? No, it was Novant. No, Novant bought it. So Novant oh, bought the hospital. Yeah, Jesus. Which is, what is that? So, Because there's a lot of people that this is happening to, right? Yeah. Um, and it's, I knew about it from the school board shit that Dan and I yeah. were running from. Like, I know... A lot of this money was to go to pay for these pedophile lawsuits that are coming up in a possibly a new uh, high school over on like mm-hmm. River Lake. Well, I think they need stuff. to build a second one, yeah, to put like split the kids up and put them in different schools now. I think, yeah, because yeah. it's getting big as fuck here. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's, it's gone. The it's area's gone, exploding. It they, went from like I think 15 years ago it was 89 thousand here, and now it's 150 or some shit like yep. that. It's yeah. like huge. It, it, it's it's it's. Once you come here, though, it is beautiful, and you're like, shit, I would love to live here and raise children. Yeah. Beautiful. I, I love Wilmington. I'm not going to shit on it. I'll shit on the school board, but that's about it. Um, the, the town itself is fantastic. It and, is, yeah. um, I love the beaches and, and all that stuff. Cops are pretty dope around here, too. Cops are great. They're yeah. almost all Shout former out to military. Glenn, <laughs> uh, and uh, Canine Bane, who lived across the street from me. Yeah. love those guys. Um, but it's one of those things where they were selling the hospital to use the money to pay for other things. Mm-hmm. Um, what happens in a town uh, that that sells up their one hospital. What's the downfall from that? Because a lot of people don't really know what it is, and it's happening in towns all over America. It started happening in, in L.A. in the 2000s, and that's when I noticed it. It was uh, Kaiser, Kaiser yep. Permanente. Kaiser Permanente started buying up shit. Huge. And there was they somebody I dated that had to go to Kaiser. She got real fucked up and had to go to Kaiser. She was like, "That's my insurance," and I was like, mm-hmm. "Oh, I was not aware of what." That entails. Tell the people at home what happens when a, a private uh, person buys a fucking hospital like that. So to give people, New Hanover Regional Medical Center has been the only hospital this side of Raleigh w- of any size for quite a while. Yeah, and it's a great hospital. And it's a, it's a great hospital. It's a very large hospital. They mm-hmm. have a fairly well outfitted situation in yep. terms of a private community hospital. The New Hanover Regional is a nonprofit. Which means that all the profits, which are significant that that hospital makes, get dumped back into the community. And they do a lot. And for a multitude of reasons, some we know, some we don't know, some we can't say on the air, um, the hospital is being sold. For $1.2 billion? Correct, yeah. Okay, so that's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Novant, which is a monstrous, and they own the hospital that's down at Brunswick Five County. $5.5 billion annual revenue. Okay, so that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Um, they are buying the hospital. There is good and bad. You are going to see a nonprofit go from a, a nonprofit hospital go to a for-profit hospital. That, ne- that is a big distinction. Like the negotiations between the hospital and insurance companies change entirely yes. once that happens. Yes. You can speak way more to that than I can, obviously. The, the way that doctors are going to be able to practice, the, the, the dynamics of the hospital are going to change significantly. Um, I hope not because... My wife is an employee of Delaney Radiology, and they have the contracts with the hospital. So I'm hoping Novant will come in and just kind of let things go. The medical care is good. The hospital does a great job. Everyone's very happy with it. So if Novant was smart, <coughs> they would just be like, okay, here you go. 
I love that they brought in UNC Medical School. Mm-hmm. University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill is a medical school. It's about two hours from here. They brought it in. Great I think that's school. a phenomenal yeah. medical school. I mean, this and I is think a it's training great. hospital, too. There's a lot of people that are there fucking, are. yeah, that there are, are residents there. So it's like, I mean, they've done really well so far, but I don't know, man. This is kind of the same blueprint as the airlines. It's, it's concerning like, it keeps, enough. Like, more and more yeah. of these big companies keep buying all yep. the smaller companies, and all of a sudden you're set with a comp- like four companies, usually isolated in different parts of the country, that can mm-hmm. set whatever fucking price they want. Yeah. That's how it works. It, there's going to be some change, and I don't, I, I don't think the people of Wilmington, if there are a lot of changes, are going to be very happy. No. No. Um, no. no. And I, I think that there's going to be a lot of ruffled feathers at a lot of different levels. Um, I think people who have become very comfortable with the way things are are going to find themselves very uncomfortable very quickly. Mm-hmm. So I, I, as a medical professional, I am excited f- the most that UNC is bringing the medical education down here because the community involvement is something you don't get a lot of in medical training. You know, I, I, I trained at, at, at Baptist in Winston-Salem at Wake Forest. Huge tertiary medical center. Mm-hmm. You, you, you miss some of that community involvement. So I think that, that this is going to be a really good thing in terms of that. It remains to be seen with the rest of the stuff. It's, yeah. it's, it, should be, it should be interesting. Well, for what, it? for what it's worth, Novant actually has a really good reputation as a company. Mm-hmm. They're not, they don't seem to be like – Kaiser's so big now, it's, it would be hard to pen one thing in California or the West Coast that's happening with Kaiser on Kaiser itself because there's so many different regional fucking centers down there. But Novant is in – the Carolinas of Virginia, right, primarily? I believe so, yes. Yeah, and they – they have a pretty good reputation of not being dicks. So hopefully it continues because this is a fucking great town. Plus, that's, that's an investment. $1.2 billion is a steal considering how big this city is going to be in a couple of years. Yeah. 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 I mean, the, the, the construction and everything, you can't keep up with it's it. Ridiculous, um, it's ridiculous. It's absurd. It's, it's absurd. It's crazy. Uh, it's crazy. But I was always curious wow. to that because, you know, we got a lot of people that write in who say, hey, I mean, I'm losing my hospital to uh, privates. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, companies and shit like mm-hmm. that. And I'm just like, boy, I, I, I'm not a doctor, obviously. Uh, I've never played one on TV. Therefore, I thought I'd ask you and what that does for you. Um, it, me, personally, it doesn't affect me in really, my practice at you, all because I don't. anybody for I don't, stuff? I don't have hospital privileges. You know, I started as a neurosurgeon in my training, and I spent enough time in a hospital during that to last me five lifetimes. Yeah. So I do not have admitting privileges. We have some great hospitalists. At New Hanover, they do a phenomenal job. If I need to do it, mm-hmm. I will. But most of the of the people that need admission either will go through the ER, will go through their mm-hmm. primary care doctor, or something like that. Cool, cool. Um, so we you, some, we, we wait, get, are you going to do sponsors? We get some sponsors, yeah, and then I want to get because uh, since you're a basketball player, I want to get to the NBA here. Okay, not COVID. <laughs> okay, because um, we can fuck it up. Obviously, we can do whatever we want. This is one of our last shows here. Who cares? I'm going to miss you guys. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to miss you guys a lot. Like, uh, I'm going to miss myself, too. Just come to Austin, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, it's going to be terrible for, you know, I, I think that, that we'll have to at least come on the show, Dan, especially now with, with stuff with, that's going mm-hmm. on. At least once a month, I think Melinda and I will have to fly down to Austin for the weekend. And, and if I, might, I might have to run for mayor there. Um, you know. oh, God, but, if, yeah, you, this, this if you run for mayor, if you, get, if you are elected mayor, I'm moving to Austin. Come, come to Roston, Texas. I'll rename the fucking city, everything, dude. We'll really do it. Um, by the way, those hospitals would be awesome if they had ghost beds in them. Mm. Ghostbed.com <laughs> forward slash drinking bros. I know you listen to the show. I try to squeeze it in where I can get it in. Um, sorry, Jesse. Uh, I do. Um, 30% off for anybody who's a member of the military, a first responder. Uh, if you work in the governments or if you are a teacher, 30% off everything in the entire store at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. If you're a regular civilian like myself, you get 25% off. If you order a mattress, you get two free pillows with that. And the pillows are just as good as the goddamn mattress. If you're stuck inside for a while, like uh, L.A., I heard L.A. is going to shut down again. Uh, you might as well fucking queef up, dude, and get uh, a bundle package. And then what you do is you put that on the 36-month page. You go program no interest on that. Um, and it'll knock it down to like 30 bucks a month. And they got USBs. You can pu- plug a flashlight in. Uh, really, hike yourself up, jack yourself off, and then uh, hit that remote, and then dee dee uh, on that adjustable base, and then go right back to sleep again. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Uh, next up, we got boxofawesome.com. Uh, best in the biz, kids. Uh, everybody's wives, including my, my own, um, orders those bullshit makeup and those things, and it's like, oh my God, it's only just comes to the house once a month. No big deal. 
You see the charge in your debit card, and you're like, man, fuck you. I need my own shit. Uh, boxofawesome.com is where you go for dudes. Um, every month you get something new. If you, you take like a little five-question test, they tell you what kind of man you are in this life, and then they'll send you products according to who you are. Dop kit, whiskey decanter. Um, I've gotten fucking knives. I got a hatchet one time. Uh, you name it. Maybe as I was talking about Elizabeth Warren. I don't know if they're tapping me, but I got a hatchet. I got an Indian hatchet. It's fucking rad. Every time they've got brand new shit for you, coolest shit on the planet. It's essentially like going to Brookstone. Every box is like a $200 value. You get it for 40 bucks. Go to boxofawesome.com, promo code Drinking Bros. Get you 20% off your first box. I get a subscription. It just comes every single month. Every single month is new. And it's all it's a whole new world. And I'm super fucking amped about it. Don't you dare close your eyes. I will not close God my eyes. God damn it. I will not close my eyes. Uh, Dr. Fucking Frank. Frank's over here looking at it now. Can you stop sh- yes. online shopping? Stop You're doing, doing a fucking, fucking show. I'm looking at Box of Awesome. Like, Jesus no. Christ. He's like fucking online shopping over here. We're trying to do a fucking show. It's amazing, dude. I was, I've never heard of it. So I was hey, like, Giorgio, wow, can I get cool. another claw, brother? Yeah, let's claw. Well, he's uh, Giorgio is switching here. Oh, yeah. you're switching here. Okay. Yeah, so he's going to be on me. He's going to be on me. Uh, yeah, he, he, he can stay on me. Um, I want to ask you um, about the COVID sitch. So uh, last time, for anybody who wasn't listening to the last show that Dr. Frank was on, um, he was a superstar college basketball player, a uh, gigantic fan of basketball, as are we. Um, we, over, we already went over our odds on the sports show for who we thought was going to win it all. We have some extremely positive news out of the NBA today. Um, they tested uh, 344 NBA players and came back with zero uh, positive tests for COVID. Awesome. Um, a lot of people are saying that is is because that um, they're in a bubble mm-hmm. right now, and sometimes that, uh, well, not sometimes, uh, some other sports are uh, are not in a bubble, and they've had some difficulty, like the Florida Marlins, another yes. player tested positive today. I'm curious, um, from your standpoint, um, how does the NFL move forward um, playing that contact of a sport and being on top of each other if they are not in a bubble? That's a good question. Um, I don't know. And I played professionally, too. You left that part out. Not Correct. only college, I played professionally. So Correct. we want to make sure that, uh, that I talk Obvi- that out. Obviously. Because yeah. I'm, I'm f- fantastic. Would you, average, would you average per game in college, uh, points-wise? I think my— 22, right? Not quite that much. I'm trying to remember. I don't even remember. It was in the 20s, though, right? It was somewhere. It was. Yeah. I think it was 20 point. Pretty two. fucking good. I was. I was okay. I yeah. was okay. I got yeah. it done. Yeah. I got it done. Um, in terms of the NFL, it's going to be tough, obviously, because in any sport, the proximity that you that you that you have to the to the opposing team. I mean, only baseball really can social mm. distance if you think about it, and like and like tennis and golf and stuff like that. But the NFL, I don't know. Um, I think what they have to do is just do testing kind of like baseball is doing and just monitor it and be reactive and be as nimble as you possibly can. There's going to be games that are going to be canceled because of this, even if the season goes off and even if there's no fans. You know, one player is going to get it. And I mean, you're already seeing it in baseball. The Marlins yeah, seeing, are canceled Marlins until are canceled. Sunday, right? Yeah, for, for an entire week, yeah. right? <clears throat> um, but that seems like it was their own fault, and here's why I say that. Fault. Nobody else in the league is having that problem except for them, and the team that they played against – didn't have any positive tests, the Phillies. Right. So, like, it seems like they were just being irresponsible, frankly. But how does a sport, Dr. Frank, in which dudes are on top of other dudes the entire game, how do you make it through and not have one positive test, especially with traveling? Now, if you were in a bubble, right. I could see it, right? Um, the NHL also had zero positive tests um, yesterday, which is great news. Um, the hockey was on last night. It was a fucking blast. Well, I, what no. do you think of the chances are that everybody in the NHL has already had COVID because they're oh. the dirtiest motherfuckers of all time? COVID, man. AIDS, herpes, you name do you it. Really, they had it. You think <laughs> they're, do you really think they're fucking walking around with masks on? Dude, no, no, you they're can't not doing even, any of like shit. they had the the fucking league had to force them to wear face shields. Yeah, with a fucking puck coming at their face, a hundred miles, literally one hundred miles per hour. Yep. they had to force them to wear face shields. You think they're gonna wear a goddamn mask? Not a problem. I don't think so, brother. <laughs> not a problem. Not a chance. So what does the NFL do? Uh, either they play and they roll the dice and they see what happens, which is what should happen, or they just cancel and shut it down until whenever. But, I mean, at, at some point, and it was uh, the best analogy is, you know, if there's a bear outside your house, mm-hmm. you can stay in your house as long as you want. 
guess what? That bear's not going anywhere. Yeah. At some point, you have to come outside and face the bear. Yeah. And that's kind of where we are, is we have to come out and face the bear. Now, this is not to say this is not a deadly disease. People are dying. They are. And, but people die from tuberculosis. To be, people die from the flu. And well, there was a million and a half deaths of tuberculosis last year. In Some, this country? No, it, worldwide. Oh, shit. Okay. So, you know, it, and you don't see people wearing masks. Now, I think one of the big issues with COVID is this uncertainty. We have no idea. And what was true yesterday is not true today. What might have been... So, a lot of misinformation, a lot of people talking that shouldn't be talking. Yeah. And so people are very scared. And as Americans, the first thing that they do when they hear something you don't like, what do we do? We push back. Yeah. So... You have to wear a mask. No, I'm not wearing a fucking mask. Uh, okay, well, that's po- potentially irresponsible. I, I don't know yet. It could be. Well, it depends we on... Uh, that's the thing is that we just don't... COVID is this unknown entity. People yeah. are like, well, it's like the flu. Well, we know how many people are going to die of the flu every year. Mm-hmm. So I think it's kind of one but of those things where it's pretty... Like, yeah. Like, it went from 26,000 to 68,000 in one year. Mm-hmm. So it fluctuates pretty... Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a huge fluctuation. That's a fucking 300% fluctuation almost. So... I think the irresponsibility part is if you know you're going to be around somebody that can die from it, you better fucking be, you better protect yourself. Yeah. Or you just have to choose, and this is the fucking thing with the NFL, and it's why players have been dropping out left and right, because I don't want to be away from my kid for four to six months. Yes. Or my family, or maybe they're taking mm-hmm. care of a parent, mm-hmm. or whatever the fucking case is, and yeah. I, re- I respect that decision. I didn't like homeboy that got on uh, Twitter or Instagram or whatever it was, is like, this is my baby. This is why I'm not doing it. Dude, just say it. You don't have to fucking make a video right. to try to make people feel bad. Like, that's just insecurity. No, but nobody, nobody's going to... If you're out there and you're talking shit to a guy and not playing because he's worried about his kid or his family or something, shit, get fucked. Who cares? Yeah. It's a fucking yeah. game. Sean Doolittle said that um, sports are a reward for a well-functioning society, right? Hmm. I think I almost agree with that. I don't think we deserve sports right now for two reasons. One is because everybody's a fucking retard. Everybody is fucking sure. stupid as shit. Like, we can't follow the basic goddamn instructions. I'm not talking about wearing a mask. I'm talking about doing an assessment of your life, right? And if people were doing this, we would know because there wouldn't be more cases. Do an assessment of your life. If you're going to be around people that are in danger from this shit, don't fucking go out and about. Or don't go around those people. Like, it's one or the other. You can't do both. Right. Uh, and we're dumb. Human yeah, beings are, are dumb. dumb as shit. We're dumb. Uh, college football. It's de- it, there's no way that's going to happen. No right? fucking way. The, the universities take on too how, much risk. How many billions of dollars are, are the universities going to lose? Like, how much good can they do with that money? What was it? 200, was it Alabama that they're going to project is going to lose $221 million yeah. from losing college Alabama, football? Alabama, Ohio State. All the, yeah. all the, big, oh, yeah. all the big ones, they're, they're fucked. Uh, Wisconsin was the one. The athletic director came out and was just like, look, man, it was Barry Alvarez. And he was yeah. just like, we're going to lose our asses on this. Mm-hmm. Not, not just the money, but also all the varsity sports that don't make money. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. Soccer. That, that money goes to all of the programs. Yeah, mm-hmm. soccer, w- no. women's basketball, uh, wrestling, all that shit, lacrosse, it's all gone. Yep. All of it's gone. The f- top 25 teams make about tw- $2.5 a year. That's insane. Oh, yeah. That is a crazy... But, you know, it... it he needs the wine, dude. Yeah. Pay attention. You, that's good, man. If anybody is pointing or reaching, it's for booze on yeah. this show. I, you know, it's, I, it's, did you kill that first leaf? Not scared. No, not yet. I, I'm going to have some more, though, because that's really good. No. But you know, it, The Marlins had another positive test today, by the way. Yes, they They're did. up to 18 now. Yeah, they are. So that's another reason. I'm just like, you're the <laughs> – if you go to a group thing, it's 20 people. Well, in this case, it's 30, 32, whatever the fuck. It, you, go, you show up, and there's only one asshole there not wearing shoes. Like, oh, you're the asshole. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Put your fucking shoes on. We got to go. No, the Marlins can't figure it out. And it's uh, Miguel Rojas or whatever the fuck his name is. I was close yesterday. I said somebody else, name? Juan Soto. Hold but, on. Uh, no, yeah. Juan Soto's actually, he does have coronavirus, but he's coming back. Proud of you. Proud of you for finding that. And then I was, I was obviously right uh, on the last episode, so you're welcome for that. No, you were way wrong. Ah, Let me was, make sure. I was pretty right. I Miguel, like was pretty Miguel right. Rojas, yeah. And um, he's, he's got COVID. But you went to a small school. What was I the did. name of it? University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point. Yes. So for you... Mm-hmm. If you didn't play the big schools, because you guys had to play the big schools occasionally, right? Occasionally we to did. To get the money? We did. We were Division three schools, so we would sometimes play up like Division two. Yeah. And you got to pick a paycheck. For uh, doing to be it. honest, I had no idea. If, if we got a paycheck, we certainly didn't well, see you, any of it. Not the players, but the university. Uh, well, if, if the, 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 the athletic department didn't get it. If they did, they certainly didn't buy us anything good with no, it. No, that goes to everything else that <laughs> goes on, right? You know? 
the, um, the freaking cross country team. Yeah. Like, oh my you god. You got to. You love them. No, I don't. You got to have them, dude. I only love one cross country runner, and I'm married to her. <laughs> the rest of the cross country people, I have no interest in. Can't do it, dude. By the way, cross country people, I can't. I don't know how you do it every day. And I'll tell you why. There's a, two, there's a level of motivation that I'm personally uncomfortable with. Yes. That is exactly it right That's there. why I can't listen to Jocko. I like Jocko as a human being. <laughs> yes. I think he's a great man. and He's, he's been on the a, show. He's for a lot of people. Human. For awesome. a lot of people, he is exactly what they need. But for me, I'm like, no, dude. No. You got to stop. I can't. And same with Jack Mandeville, which is why he's been trolling him for like two years. <laughs> <laughs> there is some people that are better humans than us. Uh, Jocko is one of them. Your wife, who's a crowd. Cra- cra- yeah, cross country. No, no, it's, that's you're you're being reductive now. She ran a goddamn half marathon with pneumonia a year yeah. ago, and she's been working. So her it's she, ridiculous. She works quote unquote part time, and say she works part time is a joke because the weeks she works are like thirteen hour days, and part time is a brain surgeon, right? Uh, no, uh, radiologist. Okay, and uh, like this morning she got up and went and swam in the intercoastal five thirty in the morning. Gross. I was like, what are you doing? Gross. Like came home and just, and I mean, she's off today, but well then go to work and work a 13 hour day. And I was like, that's, uh, it, it makes me feel like L- a piece of than. shit. That's less why than. we it don't really like it. Less <laughs> but that's <laughs> less than, that's not why I don't like it. I don't like it because that's not how I live my life. There's, there are really good books on management about understanding who you are as a person, right? Mm-hmm. I am a person that I don't give a fuck until it's time to give a fuck. So procrastinating makes sense. I'm not even kidding. I do my best work under that pressure. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're going to get mediocre bullshit, and I want my best work to be out there, so I wait. I know that about myself. Richard Ryan, know, like he and I went through this for like back and forth for years. Um, he likes to wake up at 4 in the morning, get a bunch of work done, then go work out. Like, but he likes to get his work done before other people are around to bother him because he has a real problem with contact switching. So he gets all his work done in the morning and then fucks off the rest of the day. Everybody's a little bit different. So don't judge, all right? Yeah. Don't judge me because I sleep until fucking 1 p.m. Don't judge me. It's, pro- it's my yeah. process. I am a fucking actor. <laughs> 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 we got some breaking news here. We got some breaking news. We got? 18 minutes ago, Nick Markakis from the Braves, right? Yeah. Uh, might he's, he's one of those guys that if he keeps playing for another four or five years at the level he's been playing, he might have an outside shot at the Hall of Fame wow. and 3,000 hits. I wouldn't go that mm. far. No, he he's, he, he might get 3,000 hits. What's he's, his? He opted out of the season. Correct. Right? Everybody knows that. Yep. He's now opted back in. Are you allowed to do that? Apparently, yes. You can change your mind. Oof. Um, I guess you can, if you can change your gender, you can change your mind in baseball. I don't see why not. So um, how hard would it be to get my, my penis lopped off and sewn into a vagina? Could you do um, it? Could, could you I do, do it? it? Personally, yeah. <sighs> what are you using? My ball sack skin? Is Probably. Labia? Probably. We, just, what would you, we, we fold it up. Yeah, it's like it a, it's like a butterfly maneuver, like you cook and shrimp. Yeah, and we just you know we butterfly it and we fold it in. And we make a little we make a little pouch. It, it'll be beautiful. You're good to go, right? Yeah, it'd be fantastic. Um, but no I one will know the get difference. Pregnant, right? Because <laughs> I, I saw that Not dude on Oprah, Oprah who was uh, he had like two kids. The not, pregnant man on Oprah. Not. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's not possible. It's not. It's not possible. Um, he was a woman switched over. And, okay, uh, all right. So there you go. There yeah, you go. There, I just, there you go. I want to go back to where you scoffed about Nick Markakis. So he's got <laughs> 2,300, 2,355 hits. Uh huh. That means if he plays at the expected decreased level over the next couple of seasons, he averages somewhere between 140 and 150 hits a year, which yeah. is probable for him. It's normal, yeah. He will absolutely reach 3,000 hits, and there isn't one person that has 3,000 hits that isn't in – the goddamn Hall of Fame that isn't Pete Rose or somebody that did steroids. Raphael Palmeiro. Yeah, I was going to mm-hmm. say. Um, yeah. But uh, isn't that weird to think about him as a Hall of Famer, though? Super weird. I, I can't that is do weird. It. I can't fucking do it. But he had all those great years with Baltimore. Yeah. Like it's, it's weird. He's yeah. one of those grinded out guys. Yeah, it's strange. It's strange. Um, are you watching sports now that they're back on? Um, a little bit. Are a you a baseball bit. fan? Are you allowed to? Because the bas- <laughs> basketball season starts today or tomorrow, Today, right? yeah. Today. Yeah. I don't have time because I have this, this new – telemedicine venture that we're starting Mm -hmm. so i don't really have a lot of time to watch tv so uh but yeah i will try and um and try and watch as much as i can but i'm excited for basketball what's the the nba because college basketball i mean that's a ways gone that's a ways out anyways but i don't think they're gonna start college sports are done they might they might start if there's a vaccine they might start college basketball in january and that wouldn't be that bad right (laughs) yep would you take a vaccine no no, not this would early. You? Fuck no. But if I was I trying to play a sport and make millions of dollars, I would have to, right? What have you heard on your end? Is there is there a vaccine coming? 
So there's a, there's an Israeli company, of course, yeah. um, Ooh, that has that is at the forefront. It's oh, a biotech company. That's anti anti Semitic, which is probably good. Yeah, but I, don't know. Yeah, I think we're you're fine. Yeah, you went, you went okay. anti I did. I did. It was a double negative. Yeah. So it canceled each other out. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so I think that they're they're at the forefront of a vaccine production, but you know you're trying to create a vaccine against a virus that you don't really understand. Mm. Yeah. Like, Hmm. We don't know how it's going to mutate yet. Either. Exactly. So like is the, it the flu mutates in a very predictable way. Yes, it does. For the most part. That's why they, they pick out the most common strain for the year, and that's what the vaccine is typically. Mm-hmm. Which is why sometimes they whiff, because while it starts in Malaysia, wherever yeah. the flu yeah, starts yeah. every year, yeah. that's where they go. And by the time it gets across the world, it can mutate a couple yeah. of times. So they could whiff, as they have in the past, really bad. So the flu came from Asia as well? It, it, I, it, it, it starts, and I don't remember where in the world it starts, but that's where they go. And they try and figure out which strains are going to be the most common. Mm. And then they do like flu A and B. And then ah. they'll try and create a vaccine against that. But they're shooting in the dark. I mean, they're not shooting in the dark. There's a lot of very smart people that are working on that. But it's, it's a crapshoot because that, that may die down and strains F and G might fly up. And we're like, oh, well, we didn't think that was going to happen. And now, you know, so I don't know. I'm not 100% sure I would take it. And then what's going to be the efficacy? Uh, there's so many questions about this miracle vaccine that everyone mm-hmm. talks about, but nobody really has any idea of what it's going to look like. Why do you think, I have my own theory on this, but why do you think these doctors who are saying things like the, uh, the nasal, not nasal, but the, uh, what do you call it, um, the, uh, the steroid for the lungs, whatever it's called, I can't remember what it's yeah. called, but somebody's using these, through one of those machines that like vaporizes oh, like a nebulizer nebulizer yeah so they're using nebulizer with that steroid and they're reporting that 100 percent of their patients are alive now there's these other doctors that are saying they're using hydroxychloroquine with the z-pack and zinc and all their patients are alive why is that being if if that's easily verifiable whether it's true or not you can just show up and look at their fucking records right mm-hmm. so why aren't we doing that and if that's true maybe looking into it more or something or what my real question is why is it being removed from all the social media like twitter and facebook are removing that shit every time it pops up i don't know um you know there are studies now that have looked at hydroxychloroquine and now the c or the fda is saying that it's not effective and it's you know if, if you kind of look at Control versus dosing it's not there's no real significant difference mm-hmm. and then you have these <clears throat> these doctors that are coming out with this anecdotal evidence to say well i have a whole practice full of people that are not sick right so what what do you believe you know who and i know that that, that was it the doctor first responder doctors or something that yeah, that, yeah. that video that came yeah. out that got taken down that got like 10 20 million views it's 21 as of yesterday yeah i mean it I had someone send it to me. But it's only three. I mean, my argument was it's only 350 people. That yeah. is not enough right. for statistical relevance. Plus, we don't know the previous condition of these people and all this stuff. But you can't fucking just take that shit down. That is evidence. Whether it's evidence that proves something or not, it's still evidence. It's still right. F- right. They're still reporting facts. Right. And those facts have to be considered. And the fact that we feel like it's okay to get rid of those facts is a real problem. Here's what I think is going on. I think that... Big pharmaceutical companies are like, shit, if there's a cure for this already or a treatment for this that works already and it's readily available and cheap, we're not going to make any fucking money. So I have to fucking get rid of this information as much as I can by pressuring fucking social media companies, politicians or whatever, so I can make sure I make my money on what is going to be the biggest fucking medical event of the entire 21st century. That's what it is. This is the 1918 fucking Spanish flu for the 2000s. That's what it is. So... That might be the thing that builds their company, right? right? How far would you go to make a hundred billion dollars? I a hope that's not what's going on. Come on, man! I, I said there I are hope, people. There are people in jail right now. That motherfucker is in jail right now for uh, like taking the AIDS medication and raising it by like two thousand percent. Oh, uh, Schmeckel or yeah, or whatever the fuck his name. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. getting out. He owns the Wu Tang clan album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. guy. Yeah, what a scumbag he is. Yeah. Um, like that, this, this, it's yeah. Not, okay. that's 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 that, and, and if you go, if you get checked into hospitals, sometimes, not sometimes, very frequently, 
small stuff like a fucking aspirin is twenty seven dollars. Like yep. they've been butt fucking us for years. Why would you think they're not going to continue doing it? Well, I didn't. This say is that, their big nut, dude. This I didn't say that one. they weren't going to do. It. I said I'm hopeful that they're not. But history has shown that I'm usually wrong if I make that kind of statement. So Hopefulness is uh, just pointless. And also, I want to point out that uh, <laughs> That's why butt fucking guns. has been going on for thousands of years. Yeah, the Greeks it had, invented yeah, it that. Has. Thousands of years. The Greeks also invented buttholes. Before, before Greece, Correct. a lot of people don't know this, we shit out of our dick. Yes. Greeks invented buttholes. That is Which not is true. Cool. That's not accurate. No, it is. It is. Shut, up. Shut, up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Yep. You're not a doctor. They uh, invented uh, <laughs> little Caesars and buttholes, and yeah. that's what Greece is known for. Yeah. It says it when you fly in. Welcome and as to soon Greece, as, home of the butthole creators and uh, Little yeah, Caesars yeah. Pizza. And as soon as you see a... Like, Neither of those are accurate. As soon as yeah. a butthole starts to exist, the next logical thing to happen is you're going to start putting your dick in it, right? Yes. <laughs> Come yes, on. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, Any hole you see, uh, a penis is going to go inside of it. Um, the beauty of this is we get to end this conversation right there, Dr. Frank. Nailed it. And everybody gets to, to leave with that one memory of, of you in their mind of a <laughs> penis going into a butthole. And I am super, super proud of that. And uh, that's where we're at. Now it's time to get to the drinking bro of the week, shall we? Um, this one was uh, submitted by Sander. That's a, that's a new one. Sander. S-A-N-D-E-R. Not poor, huh? Uh, Lazinski from New York, a member of Drinking Bros for three years. He's going to nominate John Lazinski. Um, he says, hey, guys, I'd like to nominate my grandfather, John Lazinski, for uh, Drinking Bro of the Week. Oh, he put a pronunciation in here. He said pronounced Lashinsky. Um, I would have respelled that whole thing, but, uh, you know, whatever, man. Do each his own. Cher eventually went by one name. Um, <laughs> ah, man. We read these live, and then it's, like, it's super sad. <laughs> but kind of never. He died in, in 2017 at the age of 98. No Oof. one lives to be 98. That's so a good that's life. amazing. Yeah. He was born in Poland on a potato farm where he worked his ass off every day. He then immigrated legally. Uh, to the United States around the age of 18, uh, just before World War II broke out. He came through Ellis Island, becoming an American citizen uh, as soon as the war started, and he enlisted right away to serve his country. He fought in Okinawa, where he was an artillery man, and received a bronze star and a purple heart for his actions of staying behind to continue firing while the rest of his troops... uh, began to retreat that's not an uncommon story a lot of people don't know this but the very first unit of special forces in america were mostly european dissidents that really? came over during or after the war yep uh, interesting yep. Uh, after the war he met his wife uh, started a concrete masonry company company and worked tirelessly and uh humbly every day i don't know if that's a word but humbly? i like this humbly. whole thing yeah. humbly yeah eh. How you wouldn't it? know anything about the word humble, so no, I, not at all. I can understand your confusion. Not at all. Now, arrogance, I know a lot about that word. Uh, fun fact, it says he also helped build Trump's Tower. Now we're talking. And, the one uh, in New York? And he had to work with the mafia, yeah. Yeah. Raised two kids, white picket fence house, sent those kids to college, and he was a perfect American. He just kept his head down, uh, did his work, never complained. He is who I strive to be in this life, and I hope we can honor him with the drinking bro of the week. Love the show, and I think he would have loved it, too. I agree. I don't know your grandfather or your father, um, but uh, he's a fucking badass. Grandfather. I don't know his grandfather, but he's a badass. Yes, he sounds like a badass. Poles are good years old. Dude. Good people, Poles. Good people. Great people. Yeah. Great people. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of them in uh, Wicker Park in Chicago, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're yeah. Right. They're they got right. some yeah, sick-ass yeah, yeah. fucking sandwich joints over there. Oh, dude. Not to reduce an entire culture to their sandwich making ability, but come on. But man. if you're, look, if you're known for one thing in this world, making yeah. a great sandwich yeah. is pretty goddamn good. Yeah. Uh, so we appreciate the submission. Uh, go to drinkingbros.com and submit uh, your submission of Drinking Bro of the Week. That'll come directly to our inbox and we will read it live on air. We don't pre read these, so we never know what's going to happen. That way we can't skip anybody. Mm-hmm. So it's like, hey, man, no story is too fucked up, no story is, is unimportant. We will absolutely read them. And uh, while you're there, you can get some butter soft teas for nineteen ninety nine. Dr. Frank, thanks for being on the show, brother. Thank you guys, man. And um, you guys have really been awesome. Like I said, I'm going to miss you guys. I love you guys. Um, obviously, this won't be the end. But, um, no. But I'll miss, you know, I'll miss being able to drive, Come on drive out to Austin, street. Texas. What's your phone number one more time? 910-679-8534. My email is Dr. Frank, D-R-F-R-A-N-K, at frankinstitute.com. Guys, don't suffer just enough with the bullshit. Just come, ask me questions, call me, l- yeah. let me help. For real, man. He look, he changed my life and uh, and a lot of yours as well. Uh, and he's just a bro in real life. Um, so thanks for being here. Uh, for Danthony, Danthony Holloway, Doctor Frank. I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good.
good night, everyone.